Hello, welcome back to Tech Tips. Today's scenario is going to be about how different systems have to integrate together and how it's really essential to have experience in multiple disciplines of the low voltage field if you want to succeed. And so we're gonna go over a real world scenario where a customer wants a camera in an elevator. On the surface, that doesn't seem particularly difficult. After all, most elevators have a, a traveler cable. It's a gutter with multiple different types of conductors. And they simply have to run one of those into the ceiling of the elevator and you put your camera in. In this situation, the customer had networked cameras. So you have to have a Cat5 cable going to each camera. Those all go back to a networked video recorder that's in a data room. And so all the cameras plug into a switch and then the network sends all that to the server and they record. So the issue became the elevator only had a coaxial cable. So coming from the elevator controller into the follower cable and then into the car itself, we had a coax. Now that's fine. There's many different products that are designed to uh, switch a coax cable to ethernet and back again. The problem usually is that they require power. They, they, you have to have power at one end or the other or both to run the device or module that converts that signal back and forth. So the issue became, how do you get power between the two, keep it relatively compact, and you had to get a little creative. Now, the particular camera we're using is an Axis, and they have a product called a, um, it's just a coax to IP converter, but it's a compact model. So the advantage of this particular device, and we'll have, um, let me just quickly draw that here. So at the, at the server end, you have simply a coaxial port. This is your coax uh, in, and then you have a small DC power coming in, or you also have an RJ45 for PoE power in. So the beauty of these is that you plug in an RJ45 with PoE, it generates power and video signal and sends it out over the coax. And then in the camera back box, we have this guy and we have a coax whip that's gonna plug into the coax coming from the, uh, the other end. And then this end, we simply have your RJ45 to camera. And this whole device is, is relatively small, so it will fit in a four square box behind your camera. Now, where it gets tricky, the particular coax that was being used by this elevator company was not very common. So a typical coax is you have your outer jacket and then you have an inner sleeve that's a, a white dielectric with a braiding. There's a cross hatch of steel braiding and then you have a center conductor that's uh, solid copper. And so that's most common. And then you just, you get a compression fitting, you slip it in. There's some, there's some fittings that don't even need tools and you, you can strip them with a pair of scissors. You just need a little 50 cent piece of a connector and you can just put that right on. These guys decided that they were gonna run coax that was outer jacket, second layer with the shielding, and then it was stranded center conductor. So the stranded center conductor is about the same diameter as the other coax, 
but it's simply multiple pieces of individual fiber that are really small. Now, a typical coax fitting is, it looks like that. So you have an outer barrel that slips over the inner layer, and then the center pin has to hit that center conductor, and they slip together just perfect. However, when it's multiple layers, they don't, they don't come together. And so the, that center pin of the connector you're slipping on will get pushed, will push those individual strands away and then it'll never crimp on there correctly. And it's a, it's a major pain in the neck. If you're gonna do this type of coax, you have to buy the right parts. And that is what's uh, generally referred to as an amphenol connector. So you have a little jacket that's, um, let me redraw this a little better. So it's narrower at one point and then it gets larger like that. And so this piece is bottlenecked to slide over the second layer. It slides down like that. And then there's a very, very tiny needle that actually slides over the center conductors. And so it takes the stranded pieces and it all has to slide under that little that tiny gold needle, essentially what it looks like. And then you have to have a crimper, you have to have a special crimper. And for lack of a, of a better word, we're gonna do something like this. And most people, most people have seen these, but, um, You actually have to crush the center conductor and it's a pain in the neck you have to slide it on keep it just right and it's a very very tiny we're talking uh, 0.05 inches of uh, diameter and you have to crush that center conductor and then that makes the multiple strands into one strand and then you can just take your your center pin slide that back on then you crimp this barrel that's around the second half and then that seals the whole thing. So you have a B and C that um, that will then just twist right into your uh, your coaxial connection here. So it's so you have three pieces. You have the barrel here that goes to that part, the center conductor that goes on the very tip, and then you have your actual B and C um, coaxial fitting, which looks something like that. You know, you've got you got a twist on um, head and that just slides in. The barrel crimps onto this back half. So this half is sliding underneath the braiding. You have to fold the braiding back, slide that half on. It's, it's a pain in the neck. I, I ruined three of them just trying to do the first one because it's not something that is very common. But you cannot use typical coaxial fittings for this. You just go buy, it's a $90 tool, plus the die sets, and then the, the individual bits are just a few bucks each. So take the time, do it correctly. It'll save you so much hassle down the road. Now, so they had a weird coax. We got the right tools, crimped that on. Now at this point, all you need is the coaxial cable. The issue becomes we had two different elevators and in the access control interface that was in the elevator machine room. So this is uh, seventh floor is the elevator machine room. There's, there was actually two elevators, two elevator controllers. I'm just creating an example of one of each. So it's not a crowded um, spot here, but they gave us one Cat5. So you've got one Cat5 controller uh, cable going from this access control interface box, and the access control interface box has all your um, connections for the card readers in the elevator. So each card reader has to have at least six conductors, so an 18.6 in each elevator. That goes to a relay board here. When the card swipes, then it goes to the board, that goes to the access control panel here. 
and then it comes back and says open this relay allows you to push the button in the elevator and take you where you want to go and then this cat5 was just there as a spare it wasn't used for anything so it was just sitting in the box but we had two cameras so we're gonna have two coax cables that the elevator company went ahead and jumped into this enclosure so we had our own enclosure to work in and we weren't working in the elevator controller ca uh, cabinet which generally they prefer so we have what we're left with is two coax connectors in this box one cat5 and then we have two sets of these adapters that are um you need poe at one end you plug into the coax and then the camera you take the other half and you shove this guy in plug into the coax coming from the the gutter tray coming from the top of the elevator and then you plug your camera into the rj45 and this actually gives you data and power so it's really simple you just you just plug in and go and there's nothing else required that makes it it makes life very easy and this is just an access um compact adapter kit and you can just look up uh coax to poe and and it's pretty easy to find so what we ended up having to do is get a very small we're going to say a four port poe switch now you only need one cat5 to run two cameras as far as the data the video stream you, you don't need to have a one for one ratio so if you have four cameras or five cameras they can all plug into a switch and you can send that data back to another another server with one cat5 that's completely fine obviously there's an upper limit of of your video throughput but it's close enough so therefore this little poe switch is only going to be 40 or 50 bucks it will generate full poe power on all the ports therefore we take this little device stick it in this small cabinet there wasn't a lot of room but all you need is a it's a really small little box you only need four ports um you have one one cat five coming in two going out and you have a third for a spare just in case something else gets added now the issue is in the elevator machine room there was no extra power so this little switch needs a 20 120 volt plug-in connection somewhere it needs to just an outlet and that was not available because most of the elevator controller is designed for their equipment there is no real just outlets for you to plug in stuff you want to power it just doesn't work that way what they did have what they did have is coming from the elevator or coming from the access control panel that runs the elevator um, card readers this is the sixth floor data room they ran a wire we're going through the conduit we're going up to the seventh floor we're coming in here they had a 12 conductor for each one of these uh card readers so they only needed six eight conductors to run the card readers so we ended up with four extra conductors per cable in this box well your typical <laughs> and here's where it gets a little mad scientist your typical um, PoE switch is going to have just a, a small plug-in transformer. You plug into the wall, and then usually it's a small push connector that's um, it's just a round barrel, and it's got a center pin that holds the positive, the outer jacket is the negative. So you have something like um, something like that, and then it's and then it's just kind of this adapter, and kind of it's got a strength member on it like that, and so you just push that in. And then that cable is really there there are two conductors but they're they're touching so it's just a solid cable going up to your uh, actual transformer so we can't plug it in anywhere in this room but we can plug it in 
right here in this room. So this is one floor below the elevator machine room. And we're gonna plug in our transformer right there. And then we're gonna run the wires up into the elevator access control panel. And then we're going to splice. So we're gonna cut the cable right there. This end with the adapter stays up here in this cabinet to plug into the PoE switch. The other two conductors are going to get spliced on. So we're going to splice on to just two spare conductors on that 12 pair, 18 two, or the 18 gauge 12 pair that's up there, not 12 pair, 12 conductors. And so we splice that back into this and then that gets us two conductors all the way back to this cabinet. We ID them here, and then we splice them back in to our cable going down to the, to the wall outlet. So then what happens is you plug it in here, that converts 120 volts to whatever the switch runs at, 30 volts DC or 24 volts DC. 24 volts runs back on that two pairs of wires, connects here, connects to your actual switch, and then, um, and then we just run it tight into that plug. Make sure you match the, the wires correctly because it is polarity sensitive. And then just plug it in. Now we have power. Now we can run our PoE switch, terminate this Cat5, plug it in here. The issue is the actual NVR switch is down here on the second floor. We've just gotten a Cat5 and data to this sixth floor panel. So we, we haven't really accomplished anything. Um, we can get a, a short Cat5 jumper plug from the switch into our PoE uh, adapter here, plug into the RJ45. We have power, PoE's coming from there to this. Plug the coax into the coax going here. That shoves video and power through the controller, down the gutter tray, into the into the back of the elevator. In the back of the elevator, we're gonna get a four square box, stick this little module in, connect that coax, gets this video and power, that comes out of this RJ45, camera plugs into that, you're good to go. Now you have power and video for your camera, that goes all the way into here. Now, we have to go the rest of the way. And that's where there's a small, there's a small adapter here. And it just looks like that. So you have an RJ45 on each end. You plug them in. And this really saves you a lot of headache trying to make two different jacks and terminate them so that they make a jumper. And you can make your own, but you can buy these at Home Depot for two bucks or just dirt cheap. So you make two cat, you make two RJ forty fives. You just plug them together, and we put that up here in the gutter tray. So this little guy goes in right there, bam, and then here we're going back out of the room, back down to second floor data room. Here was the next part of the problem. The sixth floor data room where the access control panel was, the spare cable that went from the elevator to here, was in the sixth floor data room. That was a straight line through the conduit going between the floors straight to this room. But that did not have the NVR server for our camera. That was in the other second floor MDF that is all the way on the other side of the hallway. So this was uh, probably 120 foot of wire run but they did not have drop ceilings. This was exposed ceiling, so you would have had to run the wire up on, up on the rafters, single hole zip ties. I mean, it would have taken half a day, maybe more than half a day, just to run one cable between these two closets. Fortunately, we found a network port that was already ran between these two, and so what you want to look for you look for the label 
So this label right here might say uh, WAP2. And this port right here was also WAP2. So hey, look, these two matched. Nothing's plugged into them. They're open, they're free game. You plug your patch cord in here. You take your Cat5 that's coming from the sixth floor, plug it straight into WAP2. Over here in WAP2, you're coming off of that and you just plug it straight into your the next port of your uh, NVR server that your cameras are looking for. So now we have a camera that's attached to a back box. Um, doesn't really matter what you use. The camera has the ethernet port that plugs into this. That's getting its video and power from the coax, which is coming all the way into the elevator controller, coming from this little guy. Coax plugs into that. The PoE plugs into this switch that's sitting in this cabinet. That cabinet's getting its power from the extra two conductors coming off that spare pair all the way into here, spliced into the end of that cable. Video comes, the two different video streams both plug into this PoE switch. The one cap five is going all the way into this gutter, spliced all the way down to the second floor, into a patch panel, then it jumps over to this NVR server. And this is the kind of stuff you have to deal with when the building's completed and a customer wants to add just two little cameras in an elevator. Also, nobody will help you with this. Typically, if you want this done, you're the only person at your company that's going to make it happen, engineer it, get the parts, figure out how it's gonna work, either buy the parts yourself, tell your purchasing agent to do it, um, figure out how to terminate the coax. No one's gonna hold your hand. This is pretty much do it yourself. And this is why it's important. Just because you work in cameras doesn't mean you don't need to understand how to terminate coax and ethernet and how to connect different networks. It's, it can be a headache sometimes. But this is why you need multiple disciplines. You know how to run cable, work on multiple types of wires and pick up random parts that maybe you've never used before and just grab them and go. So if you have any questions how this works, you want more details, follow-up videos, leave a comment below. Uh, of course, like and subscribe because you love the content. And next week we'll go into something else. But uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.